my name is Alan Gilmore, and I've produced this entertainment video so that you could see how I flew the ribs on my RV-12 airplane. The first few ribs went rather slowly, as expected, but then I noticed that the learning curve was not accelerating the way it should. In fact, the pattern of fluting was rather random. I'd start in the middle, and from there I fluted each side in different areas. After a fashion, I would get it right, but never in a systematic and consistent fashion. Some ribs were fluted quickly, others took lots of fluting in different places to get it right. This frustration led to me thinking about what I was really trying to do. I decided that I wanted an easy, consistent, and predictable method for getting the ribs straight. Further thought along these lines produced the concept that I would flute about every two inches, starting at one end and then progressing to the other end. This was the starting point for the method which I'm now going to describe. To use this method, I needed three things. First, I needed a flat surface. My workbench is very, very flat and as a result is suitable for the task. If it wasn't flat, I would have put a piece of plywood or other flat material on top to use as the working surface. Second, I needed a pair of fluting pliers. And then third, I needed a pair of conventional pliers. Before I started, I made one mark on my workbench, which is two inches from the edge. This corresponds to the distance I wanted between the flutes and also corresponds to the distance between two holes on the ribbing flange. Next, I put the rib on the workbench so that the spot to be fluted was directly above the spot on the workbench. Then I held the rib firmly on the table with my thumb and fingers. Specifically, the thumb is pressing directly on the spot halfway between the end of the bench and the mark. And I'm doing this to hold the uh, rib flat against the workbench during the fluting process. As I apply increasing pressure to the fluting pliers, I reach a point where the end of the rib rises off the workbench. When enough pressure has been applied, I release the fluting pliers and the rib returns to the flat position. This process will straighten the rib by aligning the section of the rib to the right of the mark with the section of the rib to the left of the mark. Once this is done, the rib is moved over two inches and the process is repeated. When finished, the rib will have been straightened progressively from one end to another in two inch segments. I tried to figure a good way to know when each two inch section was fluted just the right amount. It's easy to see if I fluted too much because the rib will rise above the table and remain there even after I take the pressure off. At that point, it's a simple matter to use conventional pliers to flatten this flute slightly. On the other hand, if the fluting is just right, I found that a very small pressure will lift the end of the rib off the workbench very slightly. So I ended up with a very simple two-step process. In the first step, I apply pressure to flute the rib, and then in the second step, I apply some very gentle pressure and look to see if the rib rises slightly off the workbench. If it does, move on to the next two inch section. If it doesn't, then I flute it again with a little bit more pressure. I will now flute this rib to show you how the whole process works. Please notice that the rib is quite curved, and in fact, there's about a half inch gap underneath of it.
Now I've had my thumb in the middle of this section between the mark and the end of the workbench. And I'm holding the back down with my fingers. Now I'm coming in and I'm going to apply fluting pressure to this spot that's right at the mark. And the fluting pressure is enough to raise that rib off the workbench. Now I apply a slight pressure and as you can see it does move it. In fact, it doesn't quite go all the way down, back down to the top of the workbench. So I'm going to flatten the flute slightly until it does go back down to the surface of the workbench. And at that point, we see a gentle pressure does raise it off the workbench. Then I move it down two more inches and we repeat the process. Again, I apply fluting pressure and it rises off the workbench. Now I'm applying slight pressure and it's just not quite lifting it off the workbench. So I'm going to apply a little bit more fluting pressure. And as now I go back and apply gentle pressure and it is in fact just barely lifting it off the workbench. So I can move it down to the next spot, two inches further down. Again, I apply enough pressure to flute, and as I do, it rises off the workbench. And now I'm applying gentle pressure, and the gentle pressure isn't quite lifting it off the workbench. So I'm going to flute it again with a little bit more pressure. And now the gentle pressure is raising it off the workbench at which point I know it's straight in that section and I can move it down and flute the next section. And again I squeeze the pliers with enough force to flute it and raise it off the workbench a little bit. And you can see it's up about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe not quite an eighth of an inch, just enough to get that metal deformed to the point where it's fluted. Now I apply gentle pressure and indeed it's starting to come off the workbench slightly. That tells me that that section is properly fluted and I can move it down again to the next section and apply more fluting pressure. And as I do, it reaches a point where it comes up off the workbench. Now I'm applying gentle pressure and you can see that with gentle pressure it is indeed coming up off the workbench ever so slightly. So that gentle pressure and movement tells me it's time to move to the next two inch section. And again, I apply fluting pressure until it comes up off the workbench. Then I release it and apply gentle pressure. And right there you can see that it's just starting to almost come off the workbench. I'm going to apply a little bit more fluting pressure. And there we go. Gentle pressure now does bring it off the workbench. Now if you look at this, you can see that this is a very straight rib at this point. There's no gaps under it. It's uh, very, very flat to the surface and that gives us a very straight rib. In fact, it's, as they say, straight as an arrow. Finally, I'd like to add two related comments. First, I did the deburring process before fluting because it's easier to do without the flutes. And second, when fluting, always orient the fluting pliers so that the flute is in, not out. Otherwise, the flute will interfere with the wing skin when being assembled. You'll notice the bright colored tape I used on the handle to help me to remember which way to hold it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to visit my website, the address is rv12info.com.